I am now joined in the studio by Eric Hakopian himself in the flesh. So, Eric, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure. It's been 30 years of Armenian independence, and we are marking independence after thousands died in last year's devastating 44-day war. How do you think Armenians are perceiving this 30th anniversary of independence on this backdrop of grief and loss, and how do you think they should perceive it? Well, I think it's a, it's very subjective, I think, because everybody, because of their personal experiences, have very specific ways in which they're viewing today. Uh, few, I would say, are joyful. Uh, some are appreciative. Um, many are sad. Uh, but I think we have to, obviously, when you're looking at a 30-year period, you're looking at a process. And there's uh, obviously plenty of dark moments in those 30 years, but there have been also plenty of glorious moments in those 30 years. And uh, here we are uh, standing, operating as an independent nation. In many ways, this country, you know, is a miracle. Uh, if you go back to our history uh, in 1900 or 1915, someone would have described the Armenia of today. Our great grandfathers would have, or grandmothers would have thought of it as a miracle. So I think it's quite appropriate to celebrate that miracle. Uh, while fully understanding our failings and all the work that still needs to yet to be done. And a concert event will take place today in Yerevan's Republic Square, but some are discontented, saying it's inappropriate to hold such an event in these trying times. What say you? Should it go ahead, or is it in fact inappropriate? Well, uh... First of all, we're not North Korea. We don't have official mornings for three years or seven years or whatever, ridiculous things like that. Uh, I think when I hear that, and I've heard that from different people, you know, there's this great anarchist concept about you don't mourn, you organize. And uh, another one is the propaganda of the deed. In this case, it's the pa patriotism of the deed. Mourning is not what's relevant. Uh, I would ask those people who are criticizing anybody celebrating today is, what have you done in the last year to house a refugee? What have you, have you been volunteering in a school if you have special talents to teach something? Have you created a job? Have you found a veteran a job? Have you helped a disabled veteran? Uh, I think we need to reimagine our idea of patriotism into something that is about deeds, that is about sacrifice and about us costing something and not arguing over silly things about celebrations. So uh, this is a time of reflection and rethinking our concepts of patriotism and not sitting behind you know, Facebook posts attacking people on silly things. Mm. And what about the development of the Armenian state and society over the past 30 years? Since independence, there's been four main political eras led by four men, Der Petrosyan, Kocharyan, Sarksyan, and Pashinyan. In what ways has the state of Armenian politics improved and in what ways has it gotten worse? And how do you see the state of Armenian politics and society today? Well, you judge every society in multiple facets. Its economy, its politics, democratic development, society. Uh, we can, and, and military and defense. I think uh, when you look at uh, Armenian society, it has vastly transformed itself over the last 30 years, in some ways uh, for the better, especially when it comes becoming more open-minded or women having a much greater role, for example, in our economy. Uh, and this is obviously very regional. It's different from place to place, even though I, there's obviously places where we've stepped back from, you know, our, uh, Soviet Armenia was a great center of culture. We're certainly not that now, or the level of culture. Uh, so it's a mixed bag on that front. I think, obviously, on defense, uh, we, you can start, we started with an A and we ended in a D in this 30-year period. But part of that was a delusion of how secure we really were. And we've been dealing with the, the fallout of those delusions. Uh, I think when, when it comes to democratic development, I think we've made tremendous progress. And we are, at the end of the day, a, an island of freedom in a sea of tyranny. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying that, and I've said that countless times, is uh, I would challenge anyone, you drive from here through Central Asia, uh, you would need to get to South Korea to get to a country that has the freedoms that we have here. So on that front, we've done well. And in the economy, having come through very, very terrible times, over the past 30 years, we've actually managed to create a real economy, not waste 
based on natural resources that are going to go away, but a multifaceted economy, tourism, agriculture, tech, um, light manufacturing, nowhere where it needs to be. But if you look at the direction of what we're likely headed towards, uh, I think we're going to make good progress there. So it's a mixed bag. Uh, we should not be satisfied about where we're at, but at the same time, uh, our pessimism, which is so natural to our instincts as a people, should be tempered hmm. with reality. And what about the revolution that happened three years ago? People were so full of hope in 2018. Many feel those hopes have been dashed. Is the legacy of the revolution in tatters or does the revolution always advance? Well, both. I mean, historically, and, and this is something that, frankly, we should have seen coming. Historically, almost every revolution is followed by a war. Revolutionary states get attacked. That was true about France. It was true about Russia. It was true about Iran. Uh, revolutionary states get attacked by foreign powers because they think their country is vulnerable at that time, just as an aggregate, as a general principle. So we should not have been surprised that we would have been attacked. Uh, and Armenia was, you know, there's an element of the war last year which involved us being a very bad example. Uh, people, if, you're a, if you're an island of freedom in a sea of tyranny, you're not popular among the other tyrants. So I think there's an element of that. So. <clears throat> there's not a there's not a revolution in the world that doesn't uh, revolution you know the day after the revolution there's 90 percent popularity and every day after that the revolution gets less popular in every country uh i think if you look at the last three years uh what we have done is we have dismantled a lot of bad things but we don't have we have not shown the state capacity to build good things up to now there's exceptions to that obviously but if you're going to judge the revolution, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a positive work in progress uh, that has, you know, obviously terrible moments during the war. And, uh, but at the same time, you need to understand the balance of where we're at and the fact that we almost went through a technically a sort of a bloodless civil war last year. We survived. We had an elections, democratic, and we're still the freest country in this region. And Eric, I know you don't look a day over 30, but do you remember being Armenian 30 years ago and the news breaking that Armenian is to be an independent state? Well, I'm not going to, I was, I think it was 23, 24 at that time. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to make myself bigger than I was as far as the kinds of things I was thinking about. But you know, I had just finished a couple of years before that, a class in Professor Rovanesian's class in UCLA. So I was somewhat immersed in Armenian history. And it, 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 the one thing that stood out for me is to be part of a generation of Armenians that saw independence after 600 years. That is 30, 40 generations. And it was, and in some ways it's a miracle and it's a blessing. And I, I appreciated that historical moment, but I can't pretend to have been, had a greater understanding than that at that point. And finally, Civilnet is marking 10 years of being on the airwaves. What do you think about what Civilnet is trying to accomplish? I think if you look at uh, what, you know, we've discussed this before is uh, we have islands of excellence in this country and we need to set up, if we have five or 10, we need to have 50 and 100. Civilnet was originally one of the islands of excellence and still is. Uh, <clears throat> well, obviously, we're not perfect. But uh, as far as raising the standard of journalism, of what's expected, uh, raising the level of dialogue, raising the standards of what's acceptable, uh, and having real solid journalism, I think uh, that truly is one of the islands of excellence that we have in this country. Well, Eric, thank you as always. Thank you.